Call yourself a pro or you're an avid DIY. When you're troubleshooting, these are the 10 tools that you must have. We've got the P2 infrared camera out. We're gonna turn on X3, which is gonna give us a little bit more resolution. This wire down here on this breaker is a red wire. Now this wire is definitely loose. In no particular order, we're gonna start with the drill here. This one's the DeWalt, it's lightweight, it's 12 volt. And my thought on this is, you owe it to yourself and your customer to do your troubleshooting as fast as possible. A lot of companies charge per hour. It doesn't take that long to get plugs and switches open, but you should do it as fast as possible because time is money. And really troubleshooting doesn't pay that much. You really need to get to that next call. Next up, infrared cameras. These are a big deal. And I really liked this one. There's nothing wrong with it. But then I tried this one. And when it comes to this camera versus the Klein, I'm gonna let you guys be the decision makers on this. And I'm gonna show you the P2 versus the Klein real quick. This one kind of surprised me. So we're gonna take a combination of our Volt Claw and our P2 camera. I've got my calibration set up, P1, P2, and P3. And that's basically what infrared is. It's a measurement of the difference of temperature. Now we definitely have a problem here. I loosened this wire myself. So I don't wanna be that guy, be like, oh, look what I found. I went to my panel and it turns out something was loose. Now I did this myself so you guys can see an example. And you can see here where we're getting some arcing. Messing with that already jumped up the temperature based on that arc. And as soon as you turn on an infrared camera, as soon as you look at the panel, you could be looking over here, we're looking at a washer right now. This is my stackable unit, my hand. As soon as we look at this panel, as we see that loose connection, you can really follow that wire. And what we're looking at right now is an insulation failure in the happening right now. So having an infrared camera like this as a technician, as soon as you go to this panel, you look at it, you say, hey, I got a problem. And it's that easy. This tool is invaluable. The picture in picture uh, is really gonna sell the customer. This thing is incredible. Got a little carrying case, you're always gonna have it on you. And I always did a courtesy infrared scan at customers' houses, even if I wasn't there to do a scan, if I was just installing a plug or whatever, I always did one because it builds value with your customers, gives you a chance to find more problems. That customer is going to call you back. So this will pay for itself. As you can see in the video, we had the client insulated multi. So we may as well talk about the lights. Lights are a necessity. Obviously, you might not have power where you're at. That's why you're there. This is the Klein multi. This is one of the bits. And what I recently discovered is that we don't even need the handle to this thing. We can just get right here. This is fairly tight and we've got enough leverage with just this tiny thing, but I can really spin this like a control screwdriver and you get a lot of control on it. And then you can quickly just zip it back in where it came from. And it's perfect for trim screws and stuff. So not having to spin that big handle and you're getting more rotations quickly. And if you're using two hands, you can imagine how much faster that would be. Not to mention it's thousand volt. So you never really know what you're gonna be doing. I'm not trying to advocate hot work here guys, but at the same time, Whenever you're trying to troubleshoot something and you're not really doing an install, but you're there for troubleshooting purposes, your mindset's a little bit different. Definitely more focused on safety than just trying to get something installed. Hot work is kind of necessary when you're doing things like this because you can find out and discover all about your electrical circuit while it's energized. It's a lot quicker. Ask any professional. Then we got our flashlights, of course. Uh, obvious reasons we just displayed. This one here I got in a two pack for like 30 bucks from Milwaukee. It's actually got a magnet on the back. And it's nice because you always have it on you. So I've also got the Olight here, which has 4600 lumens, which is just, I mean, almost stupid bright. It's just crazy. You can see this thing in the, just the middle of the day on the street. And then we got a little cobalt here. So you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money. Or you can try to get something that has a nice flood spot to it so it doesn't have any hot spots. Makes it easier to see. When we look at our plug testers, this one's a circuit screamer. And if you plug this in, it's going to scream at you. It's gonna be very loud. And if you're trying to trace a circuit or whatever you're trying to do, and you find the right breaker, or you plug this thing and it's screaming at you the whole time, and then you turn off the breaker, you know that you found what you're looking for. So this is really useful. If you're in a box and you're just touching wires together, i got a video coming out, by the way, about just touching wires together and being able to troubleshoot and not even, we don't even need to use a toner or a tracer and we figured everything about the circuit. And that video is coming out on exactly what to do and how to do it. So we'll be looking for that. We didn't end up using the circuit screamer, but we did use our plug tester. 
So to save everyone's sanity for that video, I chose not to do the circuit screamer, but I'll show you what it sounds like and it's unmistakably findable. So as soon as you turn it on and we can change the loudness, so that was on the quietest setting, but yeah, this thing gets loud. Great for two-story houses, things like that. You can hear it from all the way in the garage, upstairs in the second floor bathroom. One thing that I really like to do is take this or the circuit screamer, plug it into the dead outlet around the house, and leave it on and just start moving all the plugs around the house or kicking the plugs or just moving them a little bit. Sometimes you just have terrible backstab switches like I did in the last video, and you can see where I pretty much pulled on this switch and I just pulled it out of the wall. The wires just let go. And that's really common for receptacles. So just moving the receptacle sometimes re-establishes a connection on them. And then you can instantly see the lights or you can hear this scream at you and you know you found the problem instantly. The Volt Claw, as seen on the video, is a very safe tool. I use it for shoving wires into the boxes, uh, pulling on things. You get full manipulation control with the Volt Claw. You can grab wires and stuff very safely right there so you can see where we can grab that wire and pull it i pulled hot wires off of breakers that i couldn't physically turn off the breaker because the handle was busted off so all i could do was just also the breaker was physically welded to the bus so the only thing i could do was just pull the wire off while i was energized loosen the loosen the screw on the breaker which was a zensco or a federal which takes this small little tiny flat blade and klein has you covered for it and that's going to bring us to the multimeters. So the Fluke is the ultimate when it comes to trusting your life with a multimeter and just quality and precision. It's hard to beat a Fluke. When it comes to running around a house troubleshooting, it's hard to beat one of these cheaper ones that offers a lot more features like NCV built in. So NCV is huge when it comes to troubleshooting. As soon as we are close to the cord here and NCV is on, uh, we should get a beep here and you can see where it's got sensitivity enough to where if I'm on the neutral side of this cord no beep if I roll this to the hot side you can see where we get the beep so that means that this would be the hot and it is you can see the smaller hole right there that means the hot you can just see the sensitivity on it so really nice uh, definitely kind of better than the pocket ones. These multimeters tend to have better sensitivity, better reliability when it comes to the NCVs. And then of course you got all the other features. You got continuity, you got voltage, you got all that stuff right here in one meter. And the flukes just don't have that unless you're spending an arm and a leg. So when it comes to a multimeter that you're literally running around the house from place to place, putting it down, opening a plug, setting it on top of the washer, whatever you're doing, you're better off using this because you're not really trusting your life with the meter when you're doing troubleshooting. When you're verifying if the power's off and you're ready to fix the problem or whatever, then you know you really need some more reliability. But if you're just running back and forth, uh, you don't wanna be damaging your high quality tools. That's kind of my thought on that. Then of course, because you're opening things up, you're gonna need wire nuts and tape. Uh, more importantly, wire nuts, but you want tape because sometimes you might fix a receptacle and you might wanna tape that receptacle back. It's good, it's good practice to tape the lugs of your switches and plugs. I don't care what you say, something that I do. And uh, not a whole bunch, but just enough just to, just to keep things off of the hot terminal. I mean, you got hot terminals in here, so I like to tape them. Then you can cap things off quickly. Break joints open. You've got your clines, your linemans, whatever you want to call them, uh, your side cutters. These are essential for American wiring because almost all your joints are usually twisted. You got to untwist them, break them apart to figure out where the problem is. Cut that problem in half and then cut that problem in a quarter and then cut that problem in an eighth until you figure out where the problem is. And that's how you do it. So then we got some tool bags. Uh, you don't have to spend $100 on your tool bag. This is a nice tool bag. It's a Vito MP1X. And I do highly recommend it. It is a very nice tool bag. Like top of the line. Everything is thought out. It's got a space for everything. But check this out. I found this bag for $17. And it's got a quick clip. 
and all your stuff can go in here including your multimeter you can get your flashlight a lot of things will fit in there it's got beautiful screwdriver slots uh, really really good option I told a solar contractor about this one and he completely loaded it up with Milwaukee tools like loaded and it still had room to be able to pull everything in and out and good functionality so you can definitely load this up as an everyday go pouch to have everything you need on you and it's got storage in the bottom of it and extra pockets so if you're carrying your P2 it has a nice hook there just saying all right so let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine where's the tenth tool well it's been on the bench the whole time it's coffee gotta have your coffee you guys have a good one